I have a bit of a minor rant today and it's about the assessment process for ADHD and autism. Um, I had the first of one of my kids assessment stages yesterday. It was two hours long and they were asking me for the entire history of my child's behaviour from birth, or even then from pregnancy, through to now. And um, it was kind of fine, but I had to keep saying to her, look, we know this is genetic. I come from a family that I'm convinced is pretty much wholly neurodiverse. I don't, you're asking me to compare against some baseline for a lot of these questions. And I don't know what the baseline is because to me, half of these things are normal. And um, it's only through interacting with some other families that I realize it's not what, what is considered normal. But then most of my friends are neurodiverse. Going all the way back to school and university and people that I've kept in touch with from work and people I've kept in touch with from numerous house shares. And so it's like how, you know, these, these questions are not... Um, they're not asking for a simple statement of fact. They're asking for a comparison, and that's really difficult. Um, and I imagine it'd be really difficult for the majority of people undertaking these assessments because of the huge heritable factor. And um, I had this massive questionnaire to fill in this morning, and one of the points was, does your child speak too fast so that other people can't understand them? And they tell you to answer with your first thought. And my first thought was, no, he speaks perfectly comprehensibly. And then I stopped and I thought... I like WhatsApp voice notes from my friends because I can speed them up to 1.5 or 2 times and that's how I comprehend them. If they're played more slowly, I don't take the information in. I have to speed up YouTube videos so that I can comprehend the information. So the fact that I can comprehend my children quite possibly means that they speak quite fast. And then I suddenly remembered that when my mum was visiting, she really struggled to understand them and she was constantly complaining that we all speak too fast. So I changed my comment, uh, my, my, note, my note, my little check on this checklist. And I put a little note saying, I don't think he speaks too fast, but I hear fast. And other people have said he speaks too fast. And there were so many points that I just couldn't answer because I was like, uh, I can't answer this question until you give me more context about what you think is normal or what you think the baseline ought to be because I have no way of gauging this, or I have no way of knowing if my way of gauging it is the same way that you might gauge it. So I think there needs to be, on, on a much more serious note, there needs to be a really serious overhaul about how these assessments are carried out. Firstly, in terms of um, not asking comparative questions, not asking questions that require you to know what the baseline is or what normal might be considered to be. That's ridiculous. The other one is to make the questionnaires appropriate to both men and women, to both children, um, to both boys and girls, um, because they're not at the moment, I don't think. I think it's probably better in Sweden. I know that there's been some research about some of the early signs of ADHD and autism in children below the age of six. And I knew from when my kids were months old that they were different, literally one month old. And it was very obvious by the time they were six months old to me that there was a difference with other babies in the group who were the same age as them. Um, and so for the professionals to say you can't give a child a label or you can't, it's not about giving them a label, you can't see a child accurately below the age of seven or eight is ridiculous. Like, because we can. And I find it really positive that here they have systems where you can self-refer your child below the age of six if you do notice that there are differences and that you can then get appropriate support and you can potentially get them into the assessment system a lot earlier. Um, so there, that's my minor rant of the day, how difficult it is to fill in these questionnaires and know whether you're doing it right or not. Um, and it, it does make me concerned that if you're not aware of your own differences as an adult to the general population, that you're quite possibly going to answer a lot of these questions as there are no problems in this area when actually there are enormous problems in this area but you just think it's normal and it does make me wonder how many people end up going through the assessment process and come out with no diagnosis because their parents are also undiagnosed sorry my alarm went off to go and pick up my child from school <laughs> um because the parents are also undiagnosed and therefore unaware of their own differences and what could be considered normal or not so it's a lot to think about and I don't know how this change is going to be facilitated and I can't see it happening for a very long time.
but I do feel that it's really important and really very urgent to reconsider these systems, who they're actually supporting and how they're supporting people. Let me know your thoughts if you have any. I'd love to hear them.